Hey guys, welcome to Crypto Mining Insider. I hope you're having a great day today. Today we have another new release, another new update from NiceHash. NiceHash is really pouring their heart out to give us as much uh, improvements in their tools with Ethereum going proof of stake. And this is a real big one. So NiceHash has a new miner update, NiceHash Miner version 3.0. 1.00 and it's a pre-release now with a built-in scheduler and extra commands is available so wow really what is up with nice hash seems this whole week i've just been covering a lot of new features so i'm very impressed with nice hash development and i wish i'd seen some more developers on some of the other minor tool sets but this week i've covered uh, nice adding nice hash adding ethereum classic nice hash quick miner updates to add ergo ethereum classic uh, Ravencoin and Octopus, as well as even last night I just released a huge video, Nice Hash Complete Guide to Mining Beyond Ethereum Pre Proof of Stake. And in that video, I show you step by step how to really tune and set up the Nice Hash Miner to get the most out of it to mine a lot of these other altcoins. And the best part is that wealth of knowledge that I packed into that video carries forward right into this new miner. So jumping over to the Nice Hash blog post, I see. Nice Hash Miner version 3.100 pre-release with the scheduler and extra commands is now available. Dear Nice Hash Miners, the new Nice Hash Miner is now available for download. It features the long-awaited scheduler and new extra commands tab in the new advanced tab mode. I'll be putting a link down below if you want to check this out. But this is really a good step forward with some good improvements in the miner. And more important than anything else, I like to make sure my miners are stable. So I'm going to get into that in a minute. But before I do, if you haven't already subscribed, please press down on that subscribe button. I really put a lot of hard work and time around the clock sometimes to make these videos. And you subscribing really means a lot to me. So here you can see I have the new version of NiceHash version 3.100 up and running. And it's been mining for a little while right now. And let me jump over to the mining screen. So here's my mining. Look at that. It's up for over 7,000 accepted shares. So you know I've been running this miner for a while now, and it's been running very stable. I'm getting really good hash rates out of it, and a very low number of rejected shares, and no invalid so far. So that's really great for having over 7,000 for... When's the next one coming up? Let's wait for that status message. 7,005. But look, I'm getting really great hash rates. Card number zero, I'm actually... Recording on this computer is going to be a little bit low, but only 11 rejected shares out of that whole 7,000. That's fantastic, and to me, I'm very happy with the performance of this just mining Ethereum so far. Looking at the nice hash history and stats dashboard, I can concur that all my mining revenue is being recognized okay. So I think I'm good to go, and let's go take a deeper look now at this new miner and the features that are built into it. Now, when you download and initially install the new version of the NiceHash Miner, you are going to see everything is going to look just like it normally would. You're going to see dashboard, you're going to see devices, you're going to see the benchmarks tab, all like I discussed in that NiceHash Complete Guide. And you can see plugins, and here you could plug in, uh, I think it's Excavator you could use, LOL Miner, but I'm just going to be using exclusively NB Miner, and I already have that pre-installed right now. The other key difference, though, too, is that now when you go to the Benchmarks tab, if you click on one of these arrows next to it, normally I would be defining the benchmarks. The benchmarks are the settings that it's going to use to define how much hash rate as well as the power, and that's where I would normally be passing in the overclocking parameters. So let's look at uh, Dega Hashimoto NB Miner. So I'm going to click on the settings icon here, and let me move this up a little bit. Click on settings again. And now you can see that it's giving me the benchmark speed, the power usage, but there is no extra launch parameters here. Oh no, how do I pass my overclock settings in? That was the first thing that kind of hit me, and I was really scared that they kind of did away with that, but they didn't. They actually made a really huge improvement to it. So what you would do though now is, is you would go over to the gear setting, and in the advanced uh, tab, you're going to see for experts, it says advanced mode. If you click advanced mode, now you can see this new extra commands parameter here. If you click the extra commands parameter, you're going to see for the different miners, it's kind of like a JSON file. It holds a list of the pairs of values. So it's really easy to organize. So like I'm going to say for NB miner, because that's where I'm going to be doing my mining, click on the right arrow. And now you see, ta-da, look at this. 
all the algorithms that it has to find here. So I have Kapow, I have Autolycos, I have ETC hash, as well as even Octopus. So I could just set all my overclock settings right here. It's really easy. And the best part is, is now if you have multiple graphic cards, you can specify them individually. Like I did for Dega Hashimoto, you say, hey, Crypto Mining Insider, there's nothing to find for Ethereum for Dega Hashimoto. Yes, there is. But rather than defining it for all the cards, I defined it for each individual card. Because my mining rig is actually three RTX 3060 Ti cards. So they're all identical. They're all going to be using the same overclock settings. But a lot of you too, and even myself, I will use a lot of times alternate graphic cards. I'll have a 3080 and a 3070 or a 3070 Ti and a 3060 or something else in there. And this lets you specify it very individually. So let's come over here and I'm going to right click on this arrow here. And let me space this out because you're not going to be able to see a lot of these great features. So right here now you see this is an expanded view. So I would put in these extra flag parameters for each card. So now here's a list of the different graphic cards. Like I have three 3060s, but if you had different cards, to be listed here individually. And you would put in the parameters that you want, and then you'd put a space, and then you're gonna put the delimiter. So for power limit, you would put dash dash PL space comma. And then you would put your values in here for the different cards. So if I wanted to put a different value in for this card, let's say if I want to put in 140 watts, then this card would get 140 watts. And you kind of get the idea. The same thing too though is for using core clock. If you're gonna be passing in those parameters, you would pass in dash dash C C L O C K space and a comma, because the comma is the delimiter that it needs to know. And then you pass in the different values here independently. So I could set in different values here too. Let's say if I want to do 125. And then you know you kind of get the idea for memory clock too. And then what's really great is at the top, if you notice, it shows you a complete listing of the commands it's going to be sending into the miner. So you'll see right here dash dash PL 125 comma 140 comma 125 so this is really a fantastic improvement rather than me popping in and out of every single card and every single algorithm i can do it all in one place and that's fantastic so you have the choice to set it at a higher level it's considered a hierarchy in a sense or you could set it each individual card each individual algorithm and i think that's really a fantastic improvement with this miner now one thing too i originally set these settings in and it wasn't working for me. I contacted people in nice hash and they let me know that too. If you're having problems putting it in, then you just, you probably did a typo or something. So if that's the case, just wipe them out and then just come in and just add one parameter at a time and add the parameters for the different cards. Test it out, make sure it works. If that's okay, then start adding the next uh, column of different parameters and etc. until you get everything set in there. But once you're all set in there, it's, it's fantastic. This is a much cleaner, much more elegant way for me to pass in my overclock settings that get sent into the miner for me. So I'm really, really happy with that. Now the next big update that they did would be coming from inside of here. Click inside of settings and you see there's another tab in here and that's the scheduler tab. This is a huge welcome addition for me and I know many of you too. So you can come in here and you can enable a schedule and you could say, hmm, I want to schedule what time this is going to mine. Well, maybe I want to do it just because of convenience at a certain times of day or, you know, uh, certain times maybe when I'm sleeping or whatever it may be. In my case, I may want to choose to do it uh, when the electricity at its lowest rate. Maybe we're going to be very, very competitive with mining and it's going to be very challenging. So I know that during those peak electric hours of the day, I'm not going to want to schedule it to mine. So you could come right in here and you could say, enter in a time, like I'm gonna put in zero, zero, colon, zero, zero, which would probably be midnight, I believe. And then let's just say if I wanted to do it till 8 p.m. So 8 p.m. plus 12, that would be military time of like 20, oh, oh, I believe. And then I could say, well, let me see. I'll do it on weekdays, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and say, add the new time slot. And now it will mine during that time. So that's fantastic with me. I don't have to go and worry about starting this miner, running it in administrator mode, because that's what I need to do if I'm going to be using the overclocking command, and then having to try to communicate with some outside scheduler or the window scheduler. 
That's really way too much headache in my opinion. And I don't know people who've gotten it to work very well or at least very reliably. Having a schedule like this built in is a huge welcome addition because it's not only for convenience, but there's times of the day like I'll be mining if I'm mining at off peak hours, maybe my electricity is eight cents or 10 cents a kilowatt hour. I guess it's, I know it's different for everyone depending upon your at, but I know when I go up to peak hours, it goes up to like 20 or 22 cents a kilowatt hour. So for those few hours a day, I do not want to be mining, especially if mining is not very profitable at that time. But using something like this to schedule it is a huge advantage because now I can just schedule around those peak electric rate times and not be mining, you know, unprofitably. And aside from having these extra commands and the scheduler in here, there's really no other differences. So everything, if you're used to using NiceHash, is going to be the same. So just passing your overclocks is going to be different. And of course, that definitely big welcome addition of that scheduler is going to help out a lot of people. But if you're looking for more information on this miner too, and how to use NiceHash and even configure it to mine different algorithms, different coins, passing your overclocks, now you're not going to pass them into extra launch parameters. You're going to be passing them into these uh, extra commands as I just showed you here. But I would definitely encourage you if you have a little bit of, I guess, difficulty doing it or if you're uncertain to it, definitely go check out that nice hash complete guide. I really packed a lot of information in there, more than I've ever put into any other video. And it's really getting picked up and it's getting a lot of views very fast. So, and it seems to be helping a lot of people. So if you're looking for some guides, definitely check out one of those videos. So that about wraps it up for today. And this is kind of my new take on the new miner. So I'm very, very happy with it and it's running reliable. And in my pre-release testing and stuff like that, while it's kind of in its pre-release phase, it's been running really good for me so far. I guess only time will tell, but definitely I, if you're interested in checking out some of these new features, download this new miner and see how it works for you. I'd love to hear about it. So that about wraps it up today. And thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up like, and don't think you're getting away that fast. You gotta smash down on that subscribe button. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a great day. Happy mining.